I'm not really sure what triggered this memory today. Um, there may have been a smell. Smells a pretty powerful memory um, stimulants. Um, some of you know that I was I was in the army, and um, I've talked about that a little bit before. I was in the uh, in the first Gulf War, and the story I'm going to relate to you kind of relates to that. We were um, I was in communications and. When the ground offensive started, we would go set up communications and then pack everything back up and, and, and go again. Uh, for those of you who may not remember, there was this, they called this one place the highway to hell. And the reason why they called it that is that when we forced the, the Iraqis out of Kuwait, the way we kind of did everything, we forced them onto this one road basically leading out of Kuwait, and then we just kind of picked them off as they were fleeing Kuwait basically. Um, we were traveling during the ground ground war, and we just just did a lot of driving. I mean, at one stretch of time, I know I drove for 18 hours straight because you couldn't really go very fast. But anyway, um, we're on this. We got on this road, and we were there, and we had stopped. We weren't going any further. And I remember looking out the, the windows, and and there were bodies, Iraqi bodies, around, and. Um, obviously dead and um, so we were there and finally I, I got out of the vehicle and found out that um, basically we had gotten ahead of the clearing the tanks and the sweepers and stuff like that so we were in an unsecured area which basically meant we were actually technically behind at the time still enemy lines even though we really weren't but technically we were because it hadn't been secured yet and we were going to be there for a little bit. We had to wait. And um, so I had time to kind of just look around. And, you know, it's been 16 years now. And when I close my eyes, I can still see the scene as vividly as it happened just a few minutes ago. Over here to my right, about 2 o'clock or so, was this vehicle and um, in front of that about one o'clock was a guy and, and some other stuff and I, I, and I went up to the vehicle because this guy he had been burnt alive basically and his face and his body was was frozen in this this eternal scream of, of terror and pain it was like this his body and his, and his I mean, he was black, completely black. It was just ash. I remember thinking that I could probably just go over and reach over and touch it, and it would just probably crumble. And then the guy in, 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 over there, a little bit, there was a couple guys. One guy was in the trailer part of the vehicle, and um, he was missing um, most of his lower half of his body. And the one guy that was right in front of the vehicle there I mean he just looked like he was sleeping I mean, it didn't really look like anything that was wrong with him either I, he just looked like he was sleeping he had curly hair brown curly hair and a mustache it was very dark dark hair um, and I remember looking at this guy and I remember wondering you know did he have a a mother, did he have a father? Did he have a son or a daughter, a wife? And then I thought that, you know, under different circumstances that he'd probably kill me if he'd given the opportunity. And it was in that moment, it was in that very moment that <clears throat> that I realized that if I had to that I could take another human being's life some of you may not be able to understand that I know that I don't completely understand it myself and it's something that I hope that none of you ever have to understand to be honest with you because it's not a um, 
It's not a pleasant knowledge to know that you have that. In that times. And um, I also remember that just looking to the, to the left there, and there was this guy, there was an Iraqi soldier, and he was in, he was in pain. He was, a, he was down there and he was, he was clutching, and, and part of his, his leg was blown off, and he was just rocking back and forth on the ground, and he was in pain. And I saw these, these two young kids, and they were laughing and joking. And they said, look at that, I mean, isn't that so, isn't it cool? And this rage, this rage boiled up inside of me. And I didn't even realize that my hands were clenched and I was walking toward them. And I was gonna grab them and I was gonna scream at them at the top of my lungs that, that it wasn't funny, this isn't cool, that's a human being. We're supposed to be better than this. We're supposed to be there to, to help these people, to help them. What makes us, what makes us different is that, that we can have compassion even for, for our enemies. That, that at the end of the day, that we're, there, we're trying to do the right thing. What the hell is wrong with you? We're supposed to be better than this. That before I could do anything, um, another sergeant came over and um, corrected the young soldiers. And um, some guys immediately gave aid to the guy. You know, it's, 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 been, it's been 16 years. And I remember that moment in my life. Like it happened right now. And I was over in Saudi Arabia and stuff for eight months. And I wonder. I wonder what those boys and girls who've been over there for years in Iraq and Afghanistan, years, three years, four years now. I wonder what they're going to remember in 16 years. 